Hello everybody and welcome to another one of my 1v1 videos. I've got three fights to show you that are of a different slower nature They're against a captain, a lore master, and a sword and board guardian. The slower type pacing of the fights is a pace that war leaders really excel at and it's a, a kind of fight that I happen to enjoy just because there's time to actually involve some strategy and stuff and solid mechanics will help you a little bit better in the long run in this stuff like conservation and stuff like that All right, so here we go fighting a captain here uh, the captain is throwing up the telling mark on me so he's trying to burst me down really not the best option for a captain he should have thrown revealing mark up for the healing because he is going to run out of health pretty fast here captains don't have a whole lot in the way of self heals uh, traded they can get their muster courage to uh, give them a bit of health and he does have that trait equipped but really that's the only thing you can rely on so as you can see I started off in uh, heal mode and some such and I've basically dropped into unstanced right now and I've gone out of armor and into RF command and he's tried to get out of my banner I of terror but unfortunately he's still just caught inside the edge of it he hasn't really moved as far as he would want to uh, it wouldn't make much difference anyway the banner of terror was mostly just to go ahead and sap his power pool right off the bat and do some regen stuff to him and it's already accomplished its primary goal which was just wipe out some you know power out of his pool immediately by dropping his will so as you see I'm unstanced uh, I can basically just tank anything at all and that's actually something that came up <laughs> In the uh, in the conversation OOC before this whole thing actually started, was people were talking, ah, oh, you can't tank the the captain straight up and everything. You gotta kite him a bit. And then I was like, oh, I could tank him. And so we are in this fight. All right. So for the captain, yeah, I, basically I'm putting solid DPS on him. As far as my health goes, I'm not worried too much right now. He's out of power, and that's where I want him. So I'm going ahead and dropping some more fire on him. I've gone into Brawler Stance. I'm going to stay in Brawler Stance for the rest of the fight, and I'm going to heal and do damage from here. Right now, it's just a matter of power conservation and putting on the burst, and you know, I, he's not going to run away at this point as far as I can tell, because he's basically been looking for 1v1s and sticking around to the bitter end. So, yeah. Right, now he's going to start using that Muster Courage heal. And this is going to prolong the fight a long time because he's able to consistently keep getting that thing off and barely avoiding death and such. Uh, what you see us doing is we're doing a good job with the mobile meleeing. Uh, I would say that overall in the fight I do tend to have a slight edge on this guy as far in terms of movement goes. Uh, I do tend to get behind him more often than he ever gets behind me. He gets behind me basically when I'm turning my back to him and flipping through him and so, stuff like that. Uh, but there are several times, uh, he's cutting right now, where I'm going to be coming at him from the side and he'll barely get parries and stuff and that's going to prolong the fight. Uh, this should be coming up very soon here. So he's at 400 health or so. And now I'm trying to finish this as fast as I can, hoping to get an auto attack, hoping to get him with a cleave or something. And there you get a parry, barely survived that. Nail him twice, he's down really low. Go for it, parry it again. And his regen's kicking him back up. Uh, but at this point, my power pot's off cooldown, so I just pop this, and I know I can finish him right now. But he hits muster courage there, and that bumps up his resist levels. You saw he just resisted that, so he's not dead yet. I uh, nail him with menacing roar right there, which is always tough to get him with that AoE. He's still alive for some reason, I didn't get my crit there. And now I'm going to just try very, very hard to finish him, because he's at 200, and a good crit will get him. Parry it again. And I'm just getting a little frustrated now, but I just nail him with black speech here, and he goes down before the heal from his muster courage gets him up. And that's the end of that fight. So as you can see, the captain and war leader, it's a very different matchup. They're a lot evener than most other classes are. Uh, I have actually fought two captains to a standstill, but to do that, I basically had to turn on defensive aura and just be in commander stance the whole time, and nobody died until a warg showed up and ended the whole thing for us. <laughs> All right, next is a lore master. Uh, this lore master, I really don't know what to say about this. I this guy has got 4,600 health. He's not that good in terms of positioning and stuff. I basically showed this because it's the only lore master fight I've got recorded, and I wanted to be able to show you some lore master stuff before the changes with Rise of Isengard show you exactly how you do this. Okay, I'm in Brawlers. I've got RF Command up, and I am basically just going at this guy to tear him in half. 
I don't even bother healing or anything because this guy just doesn't have enough health. He doesn't have mitigations. I'm just going to plow through him like nothing. See, so if a lore master tries to kite a war leader, you stop and you heal. If they try to d out DPS you, you've got way better armor and a lot more health, and you just tear through him instead. Now here he's... This would have been smart if he hadn't forgotten that I've already cleared the NPCs there, and he saw me clearing those NPCs, so not the best move right there. Now he's trying to kite me. I'm trying to cut the corner and be able to get it. One last hit on him, but he manages to stay just in front of me for a little bit here. But he kept himself in combat there, and I'm going to drop him with the yell right there. All right, here I come again against the same lore master. Uh, as you can see with this particular round, he's hit me with a lot of stuff. He's not really doing the power drain. Uh, a lot of people say, "Oh, the power drain is so great and stuff," and power drain a war leader, and they're useless. Uh, I laugh at those people. As a war leader who builds the way I do, uh, I am very used to fighting on nothing but regeneration rates. And Power Drain just empties your power pool, and that's it. Then re it's regeneration again. I can pop a power pot if I need it, and go right back up. Uh, notice I'm doing a very good job of staying on top of him and interrupting his attacks as best as I can. That interrupt change to Fracture was as a godsend when that came in for War Leaders. And now you saw I've interrupted three of his big attacks and slown him down so much that he's barely even staying alive at this point. But he is putting a lot of damage on me and he could potentially get me except that I am also getting some crits on him and when you're a light armor where melee damage crits hit hard. You see, once again, I killed him, didn't even heal once. Uh, when I do bother to heal against this guy, it's not even a fair contest. Right here, I'm showing my Reaver. Basically, I was rolling over this guy so hard with my War Leader, I got out the Reaver and figured I'd try to give him a chance with the Reaver, because the Reaver is my secondary creep. I'm not as good with him. I often mess up my charge and stuff. But as you can see there, I can easily get behind the guy. He's very slow to turn, and I can just unload on this guy. This is pretty brutal here. I've got all the debuffs loaded up on him. He hasn't bothered to clean anything off with any cures or pots or stuff. I've got him reapplied the bleed there. There goes Dev Strike. He's done. I didn't even need to use that final Ravage, but I did anyway just to finish him. The only reason I have that is just to show you how to fight a War Master. There's nothing else to do with, with that one. I, I don't need to show you that, oh, I'm good or anything like that, because honestly, I don't care about that. This is to show other War Leaders in particular how to play the class in a 1v1 setting and what you can actually accomplish with it. Uh, this fight right here, Sword and Board Guardian versus Ugmog, uh, this fight goes nowhere. It's literally half an hour long and we call it a draw in the end. Uh, I do start it off badly. I'm For some reason I was in Commander's stance and I have Defensive R up. I will change those later on in the fight. But I'm really not even going to bother commenting on that right now. I just want to finish off some stuff about that lore master. When you're fighting a lore master as a war leader, what you want to do is, if you're rank 6 or higher, fight them in brawler stance as much as you can. If you don't have good healing in brawler stance, which you're not going to have great healing, but I get 900 on Crack the Whip because I've built a uh, even mix between damaged corruptions and health corruptions. If you don't have the damaged corruptions, then your healing is going to be somewhere around 700. That's really not very good. You're going to have to drop brawler stance eventually for your average lore master in order to be able to heal up and stay there. When you drop stance, just go right into no stance. Do not drop into the commander stance because you need the interrupt from fracture and keeping that thing available and getting it off in a timely manner is just going to work wonders for you in terms of annoying that lore master, keeping you alive, giving you extra time to throw more damage on him, start heal inductions of your own and stuff. Just fantastic skill there. Uh, the other thing is you're going to want to get your own flags down, drop the Banner of Terror on top of them. They are a tactical class, so sapping away their will and fate like that is just doing a lot of damage to them. Sapping their regen is a nightmare for them. They don't even want to get involved in that, really. Uh, once you get them like that, they can try to kite you. If they kite, then that is the point where you might want to drop a commander stance. I would recommend not. Basically, just stand there, heal yourself back up, and... Decide for yourself, depending on the situation, do you want to walk away or do you want to go at it again? That's the call you've got to make. Alright, in this Guardian fight here, uh, as you can see, we're going nowhere still. He's at 7,000, I'm at 7,000, I'm in Brawler's stance with 
RF command up, healing through the damage he's putting on me. He's got heal proc gear, and he's got a maxed out catch of breath legacy, which is keeping him alive. Uh, for this fight, you know, the only thing that could possibly be done better for me is just if I were to drop the health traits against him and go straight damage. I could add another 10% damage on, I could throw away a couple class traits, get extra power regen, pick up another 3% damage or so. Then I would be able to burn him down a little bit more effectively, but it's still going to just be a long, painful fight. I could also mitigate some more damage with the extra traits that I'd have freed up. But really... A Guardian in heal proc gear is just a slow fight. Uh, any other Guardian in sword and board mode, they would be half dead or more by now. And I've even killed sword and board Guardians without ever stopping to heal myself. That guy would, that I did that on was particularly bad. But yeah, there goes the point for you. Now that said, the sword and board guard fight, a lot more interesting than your average Guardian fight. Because uh, overpowered Guardian comes at you. Basically, you're going to turtle up, do some kiting around to lower the amount of damage you take, fire off Crack the Whip multiple times, run his power pool down, then go after him and see if they decide to run away. With the Sword and Board Guard fight, you get to do the same thing with the Lore Master or the Captain, where you can actually fight them from Brawler's stance, you can fight them unstanced, and you can have a lot of fun with throwing out damage and heals and keeping a fun mix of skills going off, playing the full spectrum of your character instead of playing I'm a healer and a tank right now and now I'm going to be damage and tank and a tiny bit of healing because you're out of power. Which has its own charm to it when they actually stick around to fight and stuff, but otherwise it does get pretty routine and bland. Actually while this Guardian video is playing I just want to talk a little bit about movement here. Uh, the important thing is that we're doing with movement is I'm very careful to keep myself strafing a lot. Uh, when you strafe, you go almost as fast as you do when running st forwards, but you're able to keep your enemy in front of you, get blocks and parries, and you're also able to swing around the side more easily to get behind them with less exposure to your own back and such. Uh, also, circle strafing, it's easy to keep an eye on the terrain, keep an eye on the entire area around you to see any pe other people that are coming in from multiple directions. Uh, not all at once necessarily, you need to pan your camera to actually pull that off, which is important to do. Uh, right now, I have a group with me, so they're watching my back, so I don't need to worry about that as much, so I'm really not concentrating on that. But otherwise, you want to keep your situational awareness up. Know if you've got reinforcements that might potentially slaughter the guy that you're on right now, or if there's a freep coming in that you need to be aware of, stuff like that. Uh, as far as the movement goes, uh, what you're going to see me do in here is I will move one direction, and then I'll double back through the freep and stop, and I will triple, quadruple mash my heal skill, crack the whip, and I will get that thing firing off immediately. Typically this works, uh, first few times it works pretty much without a hitch. They go through and uh, walk a little too far, and then they t have to turn around and come back again. Heal's already off. Uh, after that they'll be a little bit more wise to it, but you can still make it work, uh, especially when you start doing double and triple feints and stuff. And it's a good way to give yourself an extra little edge to try to get it off. And then you've got the double tap tactic going on that I've mentioned before in my videos. So even if they do get the interrupt on you, it's right back up again unless there's a stun. In which case you got to restart your double tap. All right, one other thing is I'm using mouse turning a lot. And you'll see me go through people and instantly swing around to be on their back and fire off a melee skill trying to hit their rear armor and stuff. Uh, that's a good skill to use, especially on stuff like you know, Guardians that are in Pledge mode. Uh, typically against a Pledge Guardian, I will just turn off auto attacks and not even bother shooting at them for a bit. But if I can get their back, I'll go ahead and take a shot with a Cleave or a Fracture, because it's a 50-50 chance of getting through, and it doesn't give them a reactive if they manage to evade it. Uh, it's just a little bit of power cost. Okay, well that's all. I'm not going to finish this Guardian video off. And so we will call it here. Hopefully next time I will have a hunter fight to show you guys. Uh, if I can find Dane Thor and get a couple fights with him, that will be fantastic. He's one of the best hunters. I hope to have one more video done before Rise of Isengard. Just to kind of have on record what the war leader was like right before Isengard. And then after Isengard, I'm going to be going in and I'm basically going to be learning a somewhat a new class with all the changes the war leaders are getting. And we will see what happens after that. Alright, well, that is all for this time. I'm not even going to bother to finish off this Guardian fight video, because really there's nothing else that happens here worth mentioning. So, that's all, and Ugg is out.